Then he spoke a parable to them, that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. Now the King James says not to faint, I believe, saying that, that there was a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city that came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said to himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. And then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Question. Verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Saints, in the Bible, and you probably already know this, God places a special emphasis on orphans and on widows. As a matter of fact, God defends the cause of the widow and has a special place of concern for their welfare. We read about this in Deuteronomy 10, verse 18, and Psalm 146, verse 9, and other places. Deuteronomy 24, 17 through 22, warns us not to take advantage of widows and to help make sure that their needs are met. As a matter of fact, farmers are told when you plow your field, leave the corners of it for the widows so that they can come so they can have something to eat. The text in Luke 18 introduces a straightforward analogy between a widow in this parable and those who are God's people, the chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. This is consistent with the portrayal of the widow of her name was Anna in Luke 2 verse 37. The scripture said that she worshiped in the temple with fasting and prayers night and day. Think of that, saints, always praying and seeking the Lord. I've said this to you before, but I remember as a child that I would stay with my grandmother and she had lost her husband when she was about probably 45 years old. He was 48 and he died of lung cancer. And from that time forward in her life, she had to make a living for herself. And there really wasn't anybody helping her. And I remember times when I would go up to the store and she would give me a handful of change, which was the last bit of money she had to her name. She didn't even have a bank account. And she would pull out this piggy bank and she would say, Honey, will you go up to the store for Grandma and get thus and such? And usually it was a loaf of bread or maybe it was some milk or something like that. But I can remember her kneeling down beside the bed and just praying and asking God to bless her and to move and to meet her needs. And I remember that. And it was one of the vivid memory in my heart of, as a child. And God always met her needs. And you say, well, Brother Robert, why is that? Because God will plead the cause of the widows. He will meet their needs. And oftentimes they're used in Scripture as, a, as an example okay, of God moving on their behalf and of their faithfulness. Again, it also reminds us of the widows in 1 Timothy 5, verse 5, that the Bible said, continue in prayer night and day. Luke reports Jesus, who is emphasizing the necessity of this kind of faith consistently. This is the type of, of faithfulness, again, that is exhibited by this widow uh, in Jesus' parable. She refused to give up. She wouldn't quit. She's going to this unjust judge, this man that doesn't fear God. He doesn't regard man. What does that mean? He's not worried about what God thinks. He's not doing anything out of the fear of the Lord. And he's not doing anything because he's worried about men's opinion. He doesn't care what people think about him. He's in this unique position to where he thinks he can do whatever he wants to. But nevertheless, this unjust judge moved on this woman's behalf. The judge again is described as being so, he is so bad that we would lose all confidence that this woman would ever get justice. 
I mean, he doesn't care about anything. But nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Because she was persistent, he said, though this, you know, I don't regard God or man, this woman is going to weary me if I do not plead her cause or to bring justice to her. You see, he is everything that a judge should not be. Did you know in the Old Testament, one of the big things that God was concerned about was that the people would have justice. And he would make sure that this was the case. This is what Deborah did. We talked about it this morning in the Sunday school. She was a judge of the people. If there was something going on that there needed to be intervention, she would be the voice of God in that situation. But here's this helpless widow. She has no leverage whatsoever in life. See, she has no means of getting this man who, who doesn't care about what God thinks, doesn't care about what man thinks, to get him to do what she's asking. She has no leverage. She can't threaten him in any kind of way. She can't do anything. She has no way to twist his arm and to get him to do anything. But what did she do? She just kept at it. She was persistent. She just kept coming over and over again. You see, she was not going to be denied, but she just kept on coming to him. We're not told what her adversary was threatening. We're not told what they were doing. But how many of you know that a lot of times, saints, listen, I know how it can be. When you don't have a husband around, people can try to act out. Mm -hmm. I know how it works. I know that if my grandfather had been alive, there are a lot of things that would not have happened to my grandmother. That's a good place for somebody to shout amen. Hmm? There are a lot of things that would not have happened had he been around. A lot of things. But here's the thing that you've got to understand. Is that God will plead the cause of the widow. You say, why did he have, she have to go to the judge? Because she didn't have anywhere else to go. Where was she going to turn? Who is she going to go to? And saints, listen, the only person often that you and I have to go to is the Lord. Is the Lord. Is God. When the devil is acting out, when he is running roughshod over your family, it is only God that we can turn to. Listen, if Jesus was walking the earth, if he was beside me, just like the disciples when they were in the in the boat, in the storm, what did he do? He just raised his hands and he stilled the storm. Why? Because he was there. But there came a day, Jesus said, that the bridegroom is not going to be with them, and then they will what? They will fast, and then they will pray. Why? Because he's not here. And the enemy, saints, is on the warpath. He's on the warpath in our family. He's trying to take down our families, take down our children. And saints, we need to be just like this widow woman. We just keep on praying. Lord, whatever it takes, I want you to touch my daughter. Lord, whatever it takes, I want you to touch my son. Lord, whatever it takes to bring them to you. Lord, I'm not going to be denied. I'm going to keep coming. The enemy's trying to damn their soul, but I'm here to petition. Lord, I want you to avenge me of my adversary, the devil, who walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And saints, listen, only God is able to move on our behalf. I can't take the devil on. Amen. Hmm? I have no power against the devil except the name of Jesus Christ in God's word. This woman persisted in her request. She didn't stop. She wanted protection under the law. She was absolutely relentless and she wouldn't quit until she got some action from this judge. Have you ever had somebody, saints, listen, have you ever had them blow your phone up? I mean, you know what I mean. I was going to say that colloquially. Just blowing your phone up. They won't stop. When I was in the middle of of praying and seeking the Lord for this message. It's interesting how God will bring this right home to you. There was a widow lady. I won't mention her name. She's not from this church. She started calling my phone. And then I, call, I called out to my wife in the, live, in the kitchen, rather. I said, please take this call. Call her back. Let her know that I'm working on this service. And, and, and I said, please call her. She said, oh, let me get some dishes done. I said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> And it rang and rang until it went to voicemail. And you think that she left a voicemail? Oh, no. She just said, hang up. Redial. <laughs> there it comes again. It's blowing my phone up. I said, hey. I said, my phone is blowing up. You've got to call. Oh, I'll get it. I said, no, you don't understand. You need to call her right now. 
And by the time she had got to her phone, this my phone had rang through about three complete series of calls. And finally she called her up and she called her by name and she's like, oh, I didn't want anything. <laughs> I just thought I would call. I mean, it's ringing off the hook like somebody had died. But saints, listen, that's how we need to be ringing God's phone. We need to be blowing his phone up. We need to be ringing it off the wall. How many of you remember that old song that used to be sung? In, it's been some while ago, Royal Telephone. How many of you remember that? We need to call him up on his royal telephone. You see, this was the type of determination that this widow woman had. And she was calling on God in prayer. And you say, what was Jesus trying to say? He was saying that in the last days, because this is what this is about. In the last days, that the saints are going to come under affliction by the adversary, by the enemy. The saints, the Bible said that, that the devil comes down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. And saints, we can only pray. We can only seek the Lord. And Jesus is asking the question in this parable. He said, and will not God avenge his own elect that cry out to him day and night? He's like, if this judge over here that just wanted to be left alone would just answer this woman's prayer just to shut her up, so to speak, how much more shall God, who loves us and cares about us and wants what's best for us, answer our prayer in our time of need? Saints, these are the times we're living. These are the days we're living. We're living in the last days. Our families are being tormented. They are being vexed by the enemy on every hand. I mean, things are out of control. You never know what's going to happen next in a family. I remember when I was younger, and, and I remember actually even as a child, how the enemy would try to stir up so much trouble in families. How many of you are still with me tonight? I mean, would stir up so much trouble into a family, bring somebody into a family, and just cause so much turmoil and infighting. And saints, listen, when that type of thing starts to happen in the kingdom of God or in our own house, we need to call upon the Lord. I remember praying and asking God, Lord, give me direction for this one certain situation. And I really prayed and God began to speak to me and he gave me direction and God broke that situation in our home. And today it's almost like nothing. It's just ancient history now. But there was a time when that thing was front and center, a problem in our family, not just for days, not just for weeks or months, but for years it was a problem and we could not find relief. But God eventually worked it out. And saints, this is the determination that you and I have to have. In these last days, the devil is working. He's bringing all kinds of sin into people's lives. People are in such bondage to sin, saints, you just can't believe it. It's almost unbelievable how people are in bondage. You say, what is that? That is your adversary at work. Yes. He's at work bringing people into bondage. He's at work destroying people. I mentioned it this morning and I'll mention it again that within the stone's throw of this church just two weeks ago, there was an ambulance that pulled up. There was a fire truck pulled up. Then there were four police cars that pulled up. Then Anna and I, as we were leaving, we decided that we were going to go around the house and they were bringing a body out in the, in the, uh, the, I guess it was the coroner. Maybe they had to come up from Kansas City. I don't know. But we drove around and we saw them bringing the body out of this house. And I looked up the obituary for it. And it's a 40 some year old man within a stone's throw of this church, saints, went out into eternity. Why? Because we have an adversary, saints. And he's going around like a roaring lion. And the only thing that you and I can do that is worth anything is prayer and fasting. The scripture said they prayed and they fasted day and night. Anna prayed and fasted day and night in the temple trying to get God to move. Saints, listen, fasting will move the hand of God. I could give you story after story of how God moves when people fast. And even in my life, but notice this, he's talking about God being faithful. He's talking about if you will call upon the Lord, surely eventually God is going to answer. He is going to avenge his elect. 
But then the next verse is the one that really grips me. I heard somebody say one time, a parable is one of those kind of stories that you really enjoy it right when, until it takes you by the throat. Hmm? That's right. You are really enjoying it. And then it gets you. And here's where it catches us, saints. Then Jesus asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find this faith on the earth? When he comes. When Jesus comes, will he find this type of faith? Will he find these type of people serving him? Will he find people still calling on his name? Will he still find people who are anxiously awaiting his return? Or will he find a bunch of people, saints, that have just given up? What will he find? Will he find people that are so distracted by the world that they aren't even looking for him anymore? You see, people are worried about God being faithful. But the question isn't whether God's going to be faithful, because He's going to be faithful. Amen. The question is whether we're going to be faithful to the very end. I remember as a child hearing messages over and over again. It seemed like every other week I heard a message on the coming of the Lord. A message about the rapture. I'm talking about in the 1970s. I remember coming to church, I remember him playing movies like Thief in the Night 1, Thief in the Night 2, and all these different things. And as a child, I just would tremble, thinking, oh, the Lord's going to come. I remember going down the highway with my mom. In those days, none of us had a seatbelt on. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We're standing up, looking out the back glass. And I remember looking out one day, and I could see these really wild-looking clouds on 71 Highway between Belton and Peculiar, Missouri. Remember like it was yesterday, and I remember my heart began to pound, and I began to think, and there used to be this old song the choir would sing, this could be the cloud he's coming back on. Lord, we all know that it's not long. The signs are all pointing forward to his returning, and I've got a longing for home. I mean, these songs would come in my mind, and my heart would begin to beat. Lord, maybe this is the cloud you're coming back on right here. But saints, listen, we don't hear a lot of sermons along that line anymore. The signs of the times are appearing everywhere, but nobody is watching, even like they were watching 40, 50 years ago. They were looking, but you don't hear that anymore. Again, what is Jesus saying? There's an, there is an irony here. You hear what the unjust judge is saying. You hear as if God is on trial, as if God is going to be faithful. But what does the scripture say? When the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find people that are still waiting for Jesus? Notice something that is said. God will absolutely, this is the implication in the Greek, avenge his people. Saints, listen, I don't know what's going to happen between now and the coming of the Lord. All I know is it's getting crazier every day. How many of you thought that it would be like it is today? Anybody? Any hands? Hmm? I was talking to my, my kids yesterday. They come by to visit us. And there's this, there this movie back in the 80s that was called Back to the Future. And I won't bore you with all the details. But this guy gets in, a, you know, he vents this car. And he can tap in the number on the dashboard. And when he goes to like 90 miles an hour, this car goes back in time or whatever he's dialed up. And I told my kids, I said, in 1985, when that movie came out, I was a teenager. I remember it. I went to see it as a kid. I said, could you imagine on that day if I'd have typed into that computer 2023 and I would have pushed the button and took off at 90 mile an hour and it would have launched me into 2023. And then I'd have came back and pushed back 1985 and pushed it back and took off and here I come back to talk to people. Could you imagine what I would say? I would grab people by the shirt coat and say, do you realize that in 2023, they're going to get boys go into the women's bathroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to let boys go into the girls' locker room in high school and defy you to say anything. How many of you know we, people are going psycho and mad with sin? And I've got a hold of their shirt. Do you understand there's going to be a dispensary on almost every corner like liquor stores are today? They say, you're crazy. That ain't never going to happen. What would we tell them that they wouldn't believe 40 years ago? They wouldn't believe. 
That is how far we're going. And see, everybody's just like, oh, it's just normal. Oh, that's just the way it is. Saints, you would think people's knees would be knocking together at how wicked society's gotten. They didn't even talk about this stuff in the 70s. Could you imagine me looking up at one of the preachers and say, hey, brother preacher, come here. Me and you need to have a talk. You don't know the half of it. You're up here talking about all this stuff. Let me tell you what it's really going to be like, brother, in 2023. And let them listen and begin to think, oh, surely it's not like that, brother. Surely, please tell me it isn't that way. Oh, please tell me the saints are all seeking the Lord. Please tell me the churches are full. No. We'll have a pandemic that is going to spread over the entire globe and they're going to shut the entire world down to where you can't even come out of your house. Oh, no, that's not even possible. It's not even possible, brother Robert. It's going to happen, friend. Do you see the times we're living? Yeah. Have you let it really sink in? Say, you see them two towers up there? Yeah. One of these days, these men are going to get in, these terrorists they are going to fly jet planes into them and both of them are going to the ground. They're going to burn to the ground. Oh, surely, Brother Robert, surely the church is filled up. Surely they all turn to the Lord, Brother Robert, please. No. Business as usual, just like Jesus said. I heard a statistic recently uh, that somebody had shared that 42% of a lot of churches never even returned to their numbers after COVID. Yep. Had the exact opposite effect that it should have had. Yeah. Saints, when the Son of Man comes, will he even find faith on the earth? Will he even find faith? You see, God wants to answer our prayers. God's always faithful. He's always going to be faithful. I think about Psalm 55, 16 to 19. As for me, the psalmist said, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Even in morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. Verse 19, God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from old, Selah, because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. You say, Brother Robert, why aren't they changing? Because they don't fear God. They don't have any reverence for God. They have no attitude at all like God. They're more like this unjust judge. They don't regard man, they don't regard God. So the question comes back to this, saints. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? We know that God's going to be faithful. We know God's going to keep his end of the deal. We know he's going to endure to the end. But are we going to remain faithful? When the Son of Man comes, will he find the kind of faith on the earth that these widows, this widow had? that doesn't give up? Will he find the people who are still reading the word of God, obeying his word? Will he find them kind of people? Will he still find people that are obedient to God? Will he find people who are willing to suffer and to die for him? Will he still find people who are praying and seeking the Lord with all of their heart? Will he find people who are praying in the Holy Spirit? And who are praying with an unction from God. The old timer saints used to say, pray until you pray. Pray until God anoints you to pray. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever just prayed and seems like, you know, the heavens were like brass. But then God lays his hand on you. And you begin to pray, not just in your own words, but God begins to carry you along in the prayers. You begin to pray. And God begins to move powerfully. Will he find people that are ready and anxiously awaiting for his appearing? Saying, oh, come, Lord Jesus. Lord, come. Lord, we can't take any more, Lord. We've seen enough. Lord, just come. Please come, Lord Jesus. Again, and finally, I will close with this question. Will he find the type of faith 
that these widows had, will he find that kind of faith, a persistent faith, a faith that doesn't give up, a faith that's going to keep knocking, a faith that's going to keep on calling, is going to blow the phone up until there's an answer. And saints, that is the question. And you know what? Jesus doesn't answer it. Just like reading the story of Jonah, it just cuts off. And you're left to wonder, well, did he ever straighten out? We don't know. And even here, saints, the question is not answered. And it's really up to us. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I suggest there are going to be some difficult times. When people didn't learn from this COVID, what do you think God's going to say? Do you think he's going to just give up? Well, you know, well, that's it. I guess, I guess they're all too hard and there's, you know, I'm out of options. How many of you think God's out of options? Matthew Henry said one time, God is never at a loss for a means of dealing with rebellious people. His quiver is always full. It's always full. And I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring saints. I know they're doing experiments around the world on all kinds of diseases that if they ever got out of the laboratory, it would be the end. And we know that. And you would think that they would have a special session of Congress right now to put a stop to it. But they're not. They're funding it instead. Funding it. Your tax dollars going to do this type of thing. That's how crazy the world is, saints. God's going to be faithful to the end. We don't have to worry about him. But the question is, will the people, will the saints be faithful? I just want to pray tonight. I just want to pray. Father, we're grateful that we know that you're faithful. We know that you're going to be there, Lord, to the very end. Lord, we know that you're going to be there to walk with us, to guide us, to avenge us of our adversary. As we cry to you day and night, Lord, even as this widow woman in this story. But Lord, I pray that each and every one of our faith will hold fast to the very end. Lord, your word said, be faithful unto the death, and I will give you a crown of life. Lord, we have to be faithful. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We know the enemy will do everything in his power to steal our faith, to get us to give up, to shimmy up the right flag or to throw in the towel. But Lord, may we nail our colors to the mast tonight that we will go down with this ship, but we are going, not going to bow the knee to the image of Baal. We're like the three Hebrew children. You may throw us in the fire, but we are not going to bow the knee to the enemy. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you. Lord, give us the faith that doesn't give up. Give us a persistent faith, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage each and every one of us. Lord, I don't know what each and every family is going through. I don't know what each and every home is like. I just know that the enemy is attacking. And Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us and encourage us, Lord, to be able to endure these things and avenge us, Lord, of our adversary. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.